Hi guys, welcome Hello. back to my channel. This is Jenny. Um, a lot of you know her already. I'm Jenny. I'm also a junior at Brown, majoring CS. What's your favorite class right now? Numerical <laughs> optimization. How's this relevant? Oh my god. Like, I feel like I shouldn't say <laughs> that. That would have not been my go to, but. So, anyways, I asked you guys to send in some questions because I've been absent from my channel for quite a long time. I think it's good to have a different perspective on this channel. So, we'll first talk about like computer science related questions. People ask, how rigorous is Brown CS and is it easy to switch your major at Brown? So it's really easy to switch your major at Brown because um, there just like aren't that many core requirements, I guess. Yeah. It's a lot easier to switch like your freshman or sophomore year. You declare at the end of your sophomore year and after that it's still pretty easy to switch. It's just that you might not finish your requirements in time before you graduate. Engineering has like probably the most requirements. Mm -hmm. So you might not want to switch to that major because it might be kind of difficult. Yeah, I would say like there's nothing stopping you from switching majors. I know at other universities you have to have sometimes a certain like minimum GPA in order to get into like a specific major. <laughs> but um, I think definitely if you want to be pre-med or do engineering, you really have to start early or else um, requirements do take a while to like complete. And how rigorous is Brown CS was the other part of the question. So I don't really know how like CS classes are at other schools. So I don't really know how rigorous it is compared to them. But I just say that it's just like as hard as you make it kind of. Like the intro classes are just usually pretty difficult just because you don't have like the fundamental knowledge. But then after all the intro classes, then it's just you can choose to take easier higher level classes or harder ones. Um, like operating systems is always known to be like a really difficult class. So if you want to do that to yourself, go for it. <laughs> but like, like you know which classes are hard and which ones are easy and it's just that if you like that like the harder classes yeah then. from like an outsider looking in i feel like the intro mm -hmm. cs classes are really intense like you think of like organic chemistry for pre-meds i think intro cs is that for like computer science yeah people. cs 33 i don't know what that is it's like a systems class. systems classes are in my opinion pretty difficult so i like 33 is like the systems class here mm -hmm. Yeah, but it does seem like you can kind of choose like which skills you want to learn. So yeah. like you can build your curriculum based off of like what specifically interests you. There are a lot of CS students who are interested in like design. So you're mm -hmm. taking UI, UX Yeah, like right user now. interface and you, wait, what is UI? <laughs> <laughs> user interface and you. Uh, user experience? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Do CS people go for grad school or go straight into jobs? So honestly, both. I'd say that for like artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, most companies want you to have a PhD, but that's also for like really specific research roles at companies. So if you're not really looking for that, then I also know a lot of people who just go straight into industry and then like possibly come back to school, like grad school and get an MBA or something like that just because they want to be a PM or like a product manage, uh, manager or something like that, which ha deals with more business. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like I guess you can get a master's. I don't really... Like, it's like a lot of mixed reviews, so you don't need a graduate school, but it also might not hurt to have it. I guess, I can't really answer this question, but my brother, by the way, I have a brother, <laughs> and he went to Berkeley for EECS, which is electrical, uh, electrical <laughs> engineering and computer science, um, and I remember like him trying to decide if he wanted to do grad school for computer science, and he ended up just not doing that. And then he just started working at a startup right after graduating from college. And I think it was a really good decision like for him. It's very like specific to what you want to do after you graduate, I think. What's your favorite pre-med slash CS class you have taken or are taking now? I actually enjoyed organic chemistry in like a weird, sick way. Oh my gosh. Um, I Who think are you? just because like the professors are so good. Please talk about the career paths for CS majors other than just software engineering. Okay, I don't know if I can speak too much on this just because I am doing software engineering, but I know that there's a lot of roles for CS in just, in like other fields. There's like FinTech, which is just companies that use technology to analyze what they're supposed to do with their money, I guess. And then in terms of just nonprofits, they're always looking for CS majors as well, just because like tech's like such a large part of just daily life now. And like every single company needs a website or other like apps to like even relate with people. 
So there's rose for computer science majors in every single Yeah, even in like medical research Knowing how to code or use like statistical programming software is so useful mm -hmm. There's like an application for computer science or coding in most if not all fields Yeah, and I know a lot of people really like product management right now and it's just basically a bridge between sometimes design and computer science or business and computer science and a lot of people who apply for that role like they look for a computer science background hardest part about being in computer science i think it's honestly like workload and imposter syndrome <laughs> I feel like imposter syndrome could be an entire video in itself. Yeah. Um, so we'll knock it. <laughs> but it's real, especially the moment you go to college and you're mm. just around like so many other really smart people. Yeah. You just don't think you're good enough. Tips um, for CS internships. <laughs> apply early, like look at cracking the coding interview. It's a really helpful book. Or cracking the, I think it's called the PM interview if you're interested in that. So there's like a lot of resources online like Lead Code, Hacker Rank, Codility, like just search it. Like you just need practice, honestly. What coursework should you have under your belt? Coursework? I think you do need basic data structures, but that's like about it just in terms of like fundamental knowledge. Um, and then after that, just take computer science courses based on what you're interested in. Like if you're interested in design, like take more HCI or like human computer interaction classes or systems, take more systems classes, back end stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause like there's like jobs for everything, I think. Okay, now let's do the pre med questions. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I'm gonna take a gap year before med school. Oh, that's a spicy question. <laughs> I would say currently it's like a 90% yes. I'll be taking at least one gap year, probably just one though. What is pre-med like at Brown? Is it any different from a regular curriculum? So there's a core curriculum that you have to fulfill at any school regardless of what the gen eds are and that is taking four semesters, four or five semesters of chemistry, two semesters of bio with lab, two semesters of physics with lab, and two semesters of math usually. Um, I think most people fulfill it by using their AP credit if they had it from high school as well as taking statistics and um, a semester or two of English. So it's literally an entire concentration. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like being pre-med pre -med is like having an entire concentration itself. So FYI, we call it a major's concentration. Here. I've just given up on calling it a concentration. Is there anything specifically special about Brown's education other than the open curriculum? That's a pretty good question considering like I think when writing college applications, a lot of people focus on the open curriculum and it's hard to like find something unique to say about like why you want to come to Brown um, academically. Okay, I guess I can't generalize because I don't go to another like <laughs> large research university, but um, I think there tends to be like a huge focus on research on the professor's end rather than teaching. Um, but at Brown, like even though professors are like highly involved in their own research, like they still also commit a very large chunk of time to like making sure that the lessons that they teach are like actually like well thought out and like I just have had a really good experience with like really difficult classes that I was dreading taking and actually ended up enjoying them. Like, they're very easy to reach. I mean professors here are really good I will say. Yeah I think just like quality of professors, accessibility, um, yeah those are the major things I would say. I want to go to med school but I'm terrible at chem, what do I do? Persevere. <laughs> Trust me like I don't consider myself necessarily very good at chemistry. Really utilize all resources possible that were available to me. So if your school has like tutoring sessions led by students, um, drop-in hours, TA hours, anything like that, like definitely take advantage. And like I truly think that anyone can like get good at it or at least like excel in the class. For those classes, most people start off on a level playing ground in the sense that nobody knows what's going on. Where you were really struggling through Chem 330. Yeah, I really just like could not with Chem 33, like it's, like was not going well for me, like I just could not grasp things. So I literally would ask my professor questions after every single lecture, like I would wait outside of the lecture hall for him and be like, hey, it's me again. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> like he literally knew my name because I kept asking him questions. Oh god, do you ever feel like you're above some people because you go to prestigious university? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> 
definitely not like above anyone else. Like I think if you ask like any student here, they would not answer that they think that they're above anyone else. Not everything in the admissions process is fair and a lot of people don't even get a chance because of like their socioeconomic circumstances and other reasons. So access to resources is something that I'm like really, really passionate about. And that is why <laughs> I started my college advising sort of project, which you can check out in the description. Um, me and my friends are helping out with like reviewing essays. And if you are from a low income or first gen college student background, then you can apply for a waiver. And I guess I'll talk about that in a whole nother video, but that's why kind of I've been gone for so long. Anyways, um, she's a busy woman. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not. How do you keep yourself motivated and always working? I think this was a pretty commonly asked question. Just like where we source our motivation from and like how we just like don't burn out, I guess. Um, especially considering like the rigor of CS and like how long you have to like be in school for pre-med. <laughs> so where do you get your motivation from, Jenny? I feel like I've just been so trained throughout high school to work really hard. So it's just carried over into college and I'm just basically if I don't work, I feel like I should be doing like I should be doing something at all like times yeah. of the day, which is so concerning because I, I've heard that from just, a lot of people. <laughs> I do that a lot and it's like not a good thing. Like I can't relax, but yeah. I mean, we're working on it. We're working on it. Finding an organization system that works for you is like really, really important. Like I tried using a planner that's like written and Google Calendar and another app. And like, it just was like so overwhelming for me to keep track of everything on three different platforms. So now that I've completely transferred into digital, like it's so much more organized. And like the satisfaction of writing out your to-do list and then checking it off is just like unparalleled. <laughs> How are you liking the iPad so far for note taking and such? Mm. Would you recommend it? I have been using Good Notes, which is um, a application on iOS that you can use for note taking, and so far it's been great. Like I love not having to use paper anymore. Like I love having my notes in one place so that like once I'm done with the class, I don't have like ten stacks of notebooks just lying in my room. Like they literally weigh like fifty pounds, so when I move out, it's like absolutely backbreaking um i will say that like it's completely unnecessary to do well in school like don't like fall into the trap where like just because other people have something you feel like you need it to do well in school you really don't need it what classes are you taking right now in your junior year my classes yeah um i actually um took a lot of computer science classes my sophomore year and since i'm half like i'm doing the joint major between applied math and computer science I'm actually like done with my computer science requirement, so I'm taking a lot more applied math ones right now. That's why my co like course load is not very computer science heavy right now. Mm -hmm. But taking um, user, user interface and user experience, this is like more of a design and human computer interaction focused class. Um, and then I'm taking two math classes. One is computational statistics, and the other one is numerical optimization. Um, I really recommend the numerical optimization if your school has one, like, it's my favorite class. Oh my god. I'm also taking architecture. It's just like a history um, of modern architecture class, which I find pretty interesting. And then a class about, like, computers, privacy, and freedom. We go through a lot of, like, cases uh, in the past about that's, like, been brought against, like, tech companies about, like, privacy issues. And we go through, like, the history of, like, the laws that have been enacted to protect privacy rights and they're really not great right now so <laughs> this semester i'm taking epidemiology physics biostatistics and design plus health basically we spent a semester prototyping a solution to uh something in a specific field of medicine that's like a really vague explanation <laughs> but basically like my group is in the trauma slash surgical icu space and we're prototyping a solution for family and patient communication how long do you guys both study every day <laughs> like literally the whole it day ranges, wait what <laughs> i'm gonna say it ranges from like zero to like 15 <laughs> hours a day it's like the week before midterm i spend like the entire day just sitting yeah. down and studying <laughs> Tips for getting stuff done early slash not procrastinating. Okay. We're actually both really good at not procrastinating, yeah. surprisingly. In high school, I was um, really bad at it, like at finishing my work early. Um, and then it actually changed a lot once I got to college. And I think it's because a lot of the friends that I made in college 
always got their stuff done early so if i ever wanted to compare answers or like talk about the homework at all mm -hmm. um if i even wanted to talk to them about it like i'd have to finish it early otherwise they'd be done with it and i just feel bad asking them so at that point i just started doing everything as early as they did yeah i would say like i do it a lot out of necessity because if i have issues with like a homework problem set um, or like a project then I need to like go to office hours before it's due so yeah, that means definitely. you have to get it done probably like one to two days before the deadline at least so you can ask for help if you need it yeah I have all my office hours for like all my classes like in my google calendar just so I know where all of them oh are. yeah yeah oh and just like specifically for computer science sometimes you don't exactly know how long a project's gonna take you because a bug might take you like upwards of like multiple well just like multiple hours to figure out <laughs> if it's a really bad bug yeah so that's why it's always nice to start early just so you like have that buffer time in case something goes wrong someone said i see you guys around campus a lot would y'all feel weird if i said hi of course not come yeah. say hi i feel like a lot of people say hi to me i think the first like month of school a lot of people said hi but now it's kind of like died down i think everyone's just like midterm-ing <laughs> midterm -ing. yeah it's a verb now High school advice, interested in pre-med, please. I would say definitely try shadowing, um, getting into research if that's something that you're interested in. Don't expect yourself to like excel at research as a high schooler. Like really it's just giving you exposure into like what the field is like and if you would be interested in pursuing that, um, volunteering. I think the biggest focus is just like making sure that this is something you want to get involved in in your first year of college because if you, try it out and you really just don't like it then it's not worth your time to like take all these pre-med courses like you could be doing so many other things <laughs> so many other things would you recommend cs on a pre-med track oh my God. <laughs> like if you can do that like good for you i actually like, know I'm... someone i know someone at stanford who's doing cs as a pre-med and he's like actually insane oh possible gosh. but like i i don't really necessarily recommend it i don't know how like me imagining like myself taking pre-med classes right now like i don't even think i'd be able to do that most people who do that i feel like end up choosing between the two yeah, yeah. they choose one how do you feel about brown being labeled the chill ivy and do you think the label is just yeah <laughs> but i feel like in high school everybody would always be like comparing grades or just comparing extracurriculars yeah no one talks about grades here surprisingly yeah like everybody just talks about like their hobbies or whatever they're interested in it's very much not competitive if you don't make it did you guys create clubs in high school what did you <laughs> no <laughs> oh my god these questions really making me consider my entire life why did you decide to keep pursuing the pre-med track even during tough times okay <laughs> this could be like an entire trilogy so i think i really like considered every other possible career and i just <laughs> did not find fulfillment at all from like any of them like i've dabbled in like design and like entrepreneurship i guess youtube is like kind of marketing um i've like looked into computer science I looked into data science and I just don't think any of any career in those fields would give me as much like a sense of fulfillment as like working specifically as a physician 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 <laughs> I don't think any other career would give me that sense of fulfillment because there's I think no other profession in which you're given such a huge privilege to be able to have such a huge impact on someone's life and like public health on the other hand is like very on a population scale doing both has been like really fulfilling for me even like through the hard times like i know that at the end of the day when i do end up practicing like it will be worth it it feels like a leap of faith right now but i have faith <laughs> that is it for the questions if your question was not answered why did I pronounce it answer? <laughs> if your question wasn't answered, feel free to leave it in the comments and Jenny and I will reply. And the Midterm Study Tips video has been filmed. It will be up soon after this video. And yeah, that's all. I will see you in the next video. Bye.